What is up, my kings and queens and all in between? It is Andrew Velasquez with another episode of Mindful Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Season two. Yay. Welcome back, everybody. I have an amazing special guest that I cannot wait to introduce you to you. But before I do that, I wanted to remind you to please go into our reviews, our stars, give us those ratings. That way, others like yourselves are most likely to see this in their algorithms. You can also download that song, Mi Corazon, written by myself, Andrew Velasquez, produced by Aaron McClendon, wherever you listen to your favorite music. And here we are, your one-stop shop place for all mindfulness, creativity. I am so excited to introduce this beautiful soul, you guys. She's mentored me. She's been a longtime friend. I love her so much. You guys, we have Debbie Bellino. Say hello, Debbie. Welcome, hello, welcome. Hello, my work hubby. Yes, Deb Sasson Smalls, you guys. So who is Debbie Bellino? Let me give her a little bit of a bio. Deb Bellino is the founder and voice behind Sass and Smalls. As a writer, storyteller, and content creator based out of Vancouver Island, BC. BC. <laughs> she is also the host of the, her podcast, Sass and Small talk speaking on topics about parenthood womanhood entrepreneurship mental health overwhelm and burnout as it relates to finding one's way back into their creative selves and essentially getting one's sass back coming from a creatively colorful history of vocal performance on stage and in studio working in network television programming in hollywood for primetime daytime and live programming the price is right the grammys super bowl you may catch one of her seasonal appearances as a singer on The Young and the Restless or hear her vocal track on a Hallmark holiday rom-com or on one of the primetime TV teasers for CSI and CIS, The Amazing Race, and Big Brother dabbling in the world voiceover promotions, and later entering kids' fashions based out of New York City as a stylist and promotional writer for children's luxury brands inspired by the birth of her first daughter. Hmm. Eventually, she made the ultimate shift from big city girl to a full-time mama mode and moved back home to Canada, as I call it, <laughs> to be closer to her family, Canada. She utilizes her corner of the web through video storytelling, writing, and podcasting to share her own personal journey of navigating life as a caregiver to aging parents and a homeschool mom of two in a neurodivergent family. Through her lens, she gives her listeners and readers a peek into reality of her life, where she hopes to inspire other overwhelmed parents and caregivers underwhelmed by a lack of artistic stimulation creativity. Through her own personal experience of burnout, loss, and grief after five years of late heartbreaking pregnancy losses and the many relatable struggles that go hand in hand with making the shift from a vibrant career to a family life and caregiving. She shares her story and spiritual journey to others who simply want to find their way back to themselves again without the initial intention of doing so life imitated art through the joys and trials of parenthood. She found a way to bring creativity back into her life as a mom by using her voice like she always did. Deb's stories, insights, and creative, creative works have been featured in publications such as BBC News, Yahoo Style, Huffington Post, Yummy Mummy Club, and a variety of campaigns and life forums aimed at improving healthcare systems across Canada. Welcome, welcome, my love, Debbie Bellino. Hello. Hi, office wifey. Hi, office hubby. I'm good. good. I am you. so happy to be here. Okay, I just gave you advice a few weeks about you don't need to put you know long intros in. And here, here it is. There it is. Hey. Like five hey. paragraphs. I'm so sorry. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm here extra. for it. No, it's <laughs> no, it's well earned. It's well deserved. And listen, we have moms that listen. We have all sorts of entrepreneurs that listen. It's not just one cookie cutter artistic box. Like, you know, there's room for everyone. That's why I wanted to create the safe space for inclusivity, diversity, all the things that you represent, really. So how does it how does it feel to hear your accomplishments and everything that you're about? What what you represent? Congratulations, Thanks. by the way. Thank you, Andrew. You know, hearing someone like you who I really admire, um, read and speak of the th stuff I've done in my life. Um, yeah, it's a little bit kind of out of body. It's kind of weird for me because I actually don't remember about 90% of those things. 
because I, it was like another lifetime. I'm, you know, I'm just yeah. living in the present right now. And um, yeah. it kind of motivates me to kind of get back into it. Right. And that's kind of the journey I'm on right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. well said. Thank you for being here. And I really appreciate all of your support. You have been this ongoing, like, just, you know, safe space of like love. I can always count on you. And I, I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, mi corazón, thank you for always being my family, my chosen family to kind of give me the guidance. You know, you were the, one of the first ones to have me on your podcast to interview me about my book. You, you were one of the first ones that I kind of approached when I lost my mom. And so, you know, it's just like a lot of like parallel things that I'm very grateful for. And, um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm serious, like your family. So I appreciate that you, the Balinos, the George, everybody, <laughs> like you guys are just it. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, really. Andrew, you're not supposed to be making me cry on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're tears of joy. They're tears. I just wanted to express that gratitude for sure. The same but, goes for you too, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, of course. No, I mean, you really showed me a lot, like, you know, just practicing uh, exercises with the breath, with the voice, and just like how to organize like my, po I mean, and it's been so fun. Like, I feel like when we talked, I was like, I'm only going to do, do this if it's going to bring me joy. And if I'm going to have a good time. And honestly, it has been like, there hasn't been any stressful moments. Everyone's been so amazing and welcoming. And so yeah, thank you for, for giving me your guidance. The best advice that I've ever heard was always listen to your mama. And your mom always said, use your voice, Andrew. Period. And you're, so your other mama here is saying the same thing. You absolutely are meant to do this. You are incredible. It's so fun. It's oh like not gosh. even, it's not even stressful. It's like second nature, right? You're just killing yeah. it. Dang. No, I even, I like joke around with my husband about it at times. I'm like, should this be harder? Am I like, I'm tripping <laughs> out that. It's not like giving me anxiety. Like typically when I have a project or something that I, I put all my passion into and I'm, you know, when I do something, I put a thousand percent. Yes, you do. Two thousand. I And this has not been that it's been so smooth. And like, I think the hardest part in the beginning was syncing Apple iTunes podcast through. Like that was it. Everything else has just been like, just, that's you know, the only hard thing water. for you. It wasn't even, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> the editing for me is the killer of that. I mean, this is why I'm. Now I'm turning to you that this is where the, the teacher becomes a student. Girl, I I'm got like, you. Adju, I'm like, Adju, I'm like, Adju, notes, come on. Yeah, no, it's been fun. So I appreciate your guidance. But um, this is about you. This is your show mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the journey of Debbie Bellino. Uh, just to give everybody a little bit of a box where we met at Mac Cosmetics. Uh, we had cubicles next to each other, which is why mm -hmm. she's my office wifey and I'm her office husband. That's right. <laughs> and, and I just like fell in love with her immediately, just energetically, just, I don't know, like maybe because we're both ethnic and brown too, like the <laughs> Mexican thing with the Filipino thing, like makes a lot of sense to me. Like we relate, like our family households and upbringings are very much alike. Um, so we're yeah, twinsies was, for sure. we're twinsies yeah, for sure. That's yeah. like the, the origins of us, but let's talk about you. Have you always been like outgoing and using your voice like extra? let's go back in time yeah 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 <laughs> yeah there's nothing oh, wrong with being extra let's go back to baby debbie where did oh, you goodness. grow up where were you born raised and tell us a little bit about baby debbie okay baby deb oh my gosh well baby anyone deb. who knows me including you um you know me as being extra and i've i've owned it for quite some time now this is who i am but uh when I was a baby Deb, like you would never know that I grew up to be extra Deb because I was quiet as a mouse. I was afraid. I was scared of everything and everyone. I was about this tall and, you know, I was always tiny. And I think I learned how to cope with the tininess by having a bigger voice. So uh -huh. ever since I was little, I just had to use my voice to just kind of be heard and it just kind of stuck. So there you have it. But Did you I, have siblings growing up? I did. So I have a big brother mm -hmm. and a gazillion cousins, like you, you understand Same. with, you know, with our yep. families, right? Yep. So it's all about big eating, big families, you know, and so that was what I was growing, growing up around was a lot of boisterous, amazing cousins mm -hmm. that kind of taught me the way. And I was always just kind of like the really sheepish, quiet one. But, um, you know, if we're talking about kind of artistry, I, I grew up following my mom's footsteps, my mom, um, play the piano and sang, and oh, I was I just, I know so, that that's cool. 
I was surrounded by that. Um, and I was three when they put me in piano and, mm. um, it was, it was, it was, um, yeah, no, it didn't turn out well for me though, because I had the worst anxiety about piano and oh. I realized I hated it. Like even to this day, if I see a piano, especially at like, let's say a family <laughs> party, if I see a piano, I just kind of like get yeah. into f- like frozen mode because I just yeah, don't yeah. like the idea of performing with the piano. Mm-hmm. It's the first time I saw myself play with shaking hands because I used to perform really young when I was young and yeah. I would go, I, we would compete and I had, I had a really, like I had Liberace essentially as my teacher. He was, no, not the Amazing. real Liberace. No, I know it's still. <laughs> but we had, like... He was exactly like Liberace. He was in, you had to audition. Can you imagine being like a five-year-old auditioning for a t- piano teacher? I had to audition. I didn't even know what that yeah. word meant. And, um, but I got in and I guess he could see that I grew up with musicality, but as far as the perfection of like I had to work so hard as a student, like if we were going to go into my childhood, I was, I just had to figure out how to do things um, kind of behind closed doors. I had to pretend I knew what I was doing. I don't know why. No one told me to be this way, but I just learned yeah. how to cope with life like that. And then, you know, like I said, I did. I loved music, but I didn't love piano, but I stuck with it until I was like 17. And um, that's a long time from four years old to 17. Mm, yeah. 13 yeah. years, girl. It's pretty crazy. And so I, I just never loved it, but I was okay at it. I guess I, you know, you know, you compete, you, I just did what I had to do. So I was, I was kind of like the obedient kid that practices three hours a day. I did my thing and then, um, but I just wasn't happy with it. And I finally quit and it was so, it was such a like weight off my shoulders. But then I think I really disappointed my poor dad because he had this dream of me being a concert pianist that he would follow around and tour with. And I think I disappointed him by going to school. Like, I think it's like, why, no, why? You no, still, like, we're learning as a student. Like, of course, he's yeah. not, you're not going to disappoint him. But Well, he wanted to travel with me, I think. But it just wasn't my thing. I was just like, why, why do I not love this? And I think it's because of the nerves, right? It was the nerves. And I just felt like I was mechanically a, a good pianist, but I, I don't think, like, mm. technically a good pianist. But I don't think artistically it was, like, in my soul. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you still play? Oh gosh, see, I got, I just got a stomach ache. My stomach just dropped when you asked me. Um, <laughs> I'm you not know, asking honestly, you to play got... right now, but. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I can, I guess. I can't remember anything. I, it's just never, it's not like driving. People think piano piano's like yeah. driving. It's not, you have to practice. And mm-hmm. I, I kind of stopped It's a practicing. language. It is, it is. Amazing. But cut to, you know, I, I found that I was, I started like getting a little crazy at school. I was like, I'm going to be student council, mm-hmm. council president. And I just had to get out there because I was so small and I had to make yeah. up for it. So <laughs> I, I would just go for these like positions where I can be seen. So I was always on stage. I was always with a mic. I was super loud and like I'm pooping my pants the entire time, but I'm like, I can pretend that I'm not. So I'd be right in front of everyone. I had a microphone and people just kind of, embraced the fact that I was extra and tiny and that's just who I was. And so oh. I, yeah, I just, I just always love that. I still hadn't discovered my voice though. I, I just knew that I was, I just had to be loud. So that was essentially my life. And then cut to moving to Toronto. I went to college there. I went to university and I was supposed to go into nursing and then medicine. Mm-hmm. I was going to be a child psychologist. There was that plan because yeah. I love kids, but something happened. I'm like, I don't like it. So I quit Hmm. mid, I just stopped. And then I ended up going into um, getting my bachelor's of arts and then just going right into like marketing and like shout out to Anthony Calumet. He was my mentor throughout all my college years. Yeah, Anthony. And he was amazing. He was just like, you are, he's, he, he's still like owning marketing. Like he just owns marketing here in, in, in Canada, in Canada. How do you call it? Canada. Canada. But anyways, I went to the East Coast and there he was. And I just fell in love with the idea of like sales. And um, we started doing um, commercials, right? And I was like, I love the whole process of production. Oh, there's an art to marketing, 100%. Right? And like having to be part of that. Like I didn't love the psychology of it, like trying to influence people. But I loved the idea of like, you know, 
people getting done up to like sell mm -hmm. a product mm -hmm. and then and then going behind the camera and in front of the camera i just love the whole process and i didn't know mm -hmm. which part of the camera i needed to be like behind or in front of but yeah. i just needed to be part of that so you know i really was intrigued by broadcasting so i took my then boyfriend and mm -hmm. i grabbed him by the ears and i said come with me to la you know and it yeah. was kind of like and i grew up in a really really Catholic family. So like to have a Same. boyfriend that young and like, you know, and flying over to LA. I mean, I don't think that was ideal, but I needed, I, I think we needed each other yeah. and yeah. And then we just went to LA and it was just kind of the rest is history. And that's where I found my voice. I went to, I don't know, you just kind of asked me about my childhood. So maybe I'll just, no, 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 it's great. <laughs> Keep it going. No, you're on a roll. I love it. Why okay, LA so though? Wiley. Okay. So good question. I was supposed to go to New York actually, because there wasn't an op opportunity in sales. Mm. And then I'm going to drink coffee because my mouth is dry. Cause that's what happens when I keep talking. Drink. Okay. I'll drink tea. Oh, you're so good. You don't drink coffee. Hey, nope. Oh, and you have a Mickey mouse cup. Mint tea. Oh, with and Mickey. Mint tea with Mickey. I love Mickey. Mickey mint. Mm. One of these days I'm gonna be in Florida. That's my plan. Oh, Come visit. Back. We'll host you guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, all the babies, all the Bellinos. All the babies. Okay. So what I ended up doing was I went to, I was supposed to go to New York and I got a little frightened by the idea of, of the Big Apple. And I was like, let's just try LA. I mean, there, we have nothing to lose. We didn't even have, actually have a job. We were just like, let's just go. Let's just mm -hmm. see. And um, I think one of the first things that I did was go to CBS and there was, um, there was a show, Craig Kilborn. And I went there, it was like one of those live late night shows. Okay. And my, we went there and there was this guy just kind of hype man. And he's like, come on. It was telling everyone to like clap yeah. their hands. And like, yeah. this is where you, you know, it's a little bit curated, right? Like that's where you clap. This is where you laugh. And you know, yeah. but I, I didn't care about that. I didn't even care about being in studio. I just wanted to be him. I was like, the party starter. I want to mm -hmm. be the party starter. Oh my yeah. God. That's a, that's a good one. I've, I've never been to cool. <laughs> I've never referred to him as that, but he really was the party star. And I think that's mm -hmm. what was so appealing for me. So I hold up the I, fact that you were just like, I'm just going to go to CVS and just try. Like, can we acknowledge that? Like you just went and had the courage to take that risk. Like, that's so cool. Well, like, that's exactly it. I went there just actually for the show, but the next morning I handed mm -hmm. in my, my resume to CBS. That's and what I'm, I'm talking like, about. I don't know anything i have zero experience my even my internship was in advertising not television but let's just do it and yeah. um they gave me a chance i couldn't believe it and i met i met some of the most amazing kind of um big brothers and sisters there you know that was an that was another place where i just kind of got adopted because george yeah. and i were my husband george and i we we um didn't know anybody we didn't have family we just started from ground up we lived yeah. in this tiny little place in Pasadena for a little bit. And then you did in... what part of Pasadena? I can't even remember. Oh, no way. I take that back. I think we were just living temporarily for like a week there, like it, we, okay. until we found a place to rent. And I can't remember where it was. But I do remember like looking incessantly outside my window to see if my car was stolen. Because <laughs> like I was totally nervous oh, about it. That's probably, that sounds like North Pasadena. Oh, there you go. It was just like probably yeah. North Pass. <laughs> and then we found our way to um, kind of, I want to say, uh, wherever the Grove is. What's that area? I can't, I can't yeah. remember. And um, we, and we it's found not a Hollywood, or... Beverly Hills, but it's like, yeah. Adjacent. Mid-city, yeah. Yeah, they call mm -hmm. it like Bev Hills adjacent because it's not mm -hmm. exactly Bev Hills. So that's mm -hmm. where we lived and we lived really humbly and it just kind of kept us grounded, right? Like we we're just like, we're new, we're starting up. So I was thirsty. I was like, you know, give me all the experiences, throw it at me. And, you know, I got the best experiences at CBS. And do I just keep going about this? Because, yeah, you know, yeah. okay. You're doing great. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we're we're at CBS and um, George continued school. And so we had to carry we had to carry him through. Wait, George uh, was the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. no, he was the boyfriend. Yes, yes, he was he the was boyfriend. The, you didn't say George. That's why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I I, I left I my boyfriend, my then boyfriend, to go with this beautiful man named George. <laughs> no, I actually he we grew up together. We were, we we're college sweethearts mm. in a way. We didn't go to college together. He went to another one, but he's oh, also an artist. Oh, well, yeah, he's, he, we grew up together. We were babies together and went to CBS. I worked there for a little bit. And the good thing about CBS is that it wasn't just broadcast for me. It was like I, I really got a good taste of 
Like um, it was live programming. I got a taste of all my favorite shows, like daytime programming and, and I, you know, the price is right. I wasn't mm-hmm. exactly the hype man for these jobs, but I, I was more in post-production and network, but yeah. I, I really got to be part of that like scene. Right. And, and we all know that red carpet isn't really red carpet behind the scenes. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, hands-on stuff, mm-hmm. but I still loved it. I just loved the energy of it. Um, and then, so uh, I don't know how this happened, but I went to church there and we were kind of like on the spiritual journey to, f- to find ourselves mm-hmm. and find our spiritual way. And in Hollywood, you know, the churches, they're different. It's just, it mm-hmm. was just like, it's a lot more open and inclusive. And so mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let's go in there. And the music was just like, pumping like the we you know there was gospel yeah. and there was like and i'm like and then I, there was a girl in the front and she's a cantor and she was kind of a hype man too and she's like come on yeah. let's sing and i'm like i want to be her right i just keep looking at people i'm like i want to yeah. be that see my, my the hype party man now is you. yeah the party starters well i look at you and i'm like i want to be him when i grow up Stop. I <laughs> But anyways yeah i went to uh i went to this church and it was just an amazing church and you know, long story short, I ended up joining the choir. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, well, I guess I'm okay at this. Like, okay, this is cool. And we're starting to sing harmonies. I'm like, gosh, this is amazing. And it's got to be something if you're in a, in a kind of in a group um, where you do harmonies and you're singing together and you just make yourself cry every time. Wow. And I realized, yeah, I realized I was just like really into music. I was like, I think I found singing to be and did you thing. always know that you can sing like as a young child like did you know like oh i got chops like i got vocals i can no. keep in tune no when no no, no. my parents i want to say la i think that's what happened was because they people started paying me for it so what i was like i guess heck? that means something yeah. <laughs> but what well i mean okay let's be honest here my my parents and then relatives are like well you play piano so you must sing so and they never put me in lessons because they're like we're not going to spend another like eight billion dollars to put in your voice you just yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah. be a piano and you just learn voice from that, that makes sense yeah right and then so you just like innately get music in your head when you play and so i could hold a tune i guess and i could i knew what pitch was but i never really sang sang but what i loved was th- there was um it's a little it's a little different now but there was a there was a, a a trend as far as music to be melodic not not like you know the the gymnastics like uh-huh, when you, uh-huh. you know when you see people singing and Belt. stuff like yeah yeah i get really intimidated by that because i'm not like that i could belt but i can't do like all the yeah, runs yeah. and stuff like Christina but, Aguilera. yeah i'm no christina aguilera i'm no you know what i mean <laughs> like i just i and, and nor do i try but back then music was just all about singing a melody and touching souls that's just all it was and so i i just kind of honed into that when i cantered i ended up being hired as a cantor at the church and i ended up being wow. hype man and i was a small i was again i was like the smallest ca- party cantor starter. Yeah, party and i was just the little guy in the front where and there was people behind me and then um and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just, you know, I had a lot of imposter syndrome pretty much all my life, right up until, you know, you know five minutes ago. Like, oh my God. imposter syndrome kind of follows me around, which I don't love, but, but there is talk something. About that here. Yeah, let's talk about this too, because I, I need you to help me out with that, because like, I just, you always help me out with my imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I mean, that. that's, that's, I love you. And that's part of the human experience and the artist experience too, is we, you know, we're, we're raised, we're taught by society that we're supposed to be a certain way. And, you know, oftentimes that can take away from the innocence of what our true selves was as a child prior to us being exposed to, you know, media and so many different things that it affects the way our adulthood becomes shaped. But exactly, I often think of little 10 year old Andrew and I want to encourage you to think of little 10 year old Debbie and her innocence and how excited she was to live life and play with color and use her voice and so think back to that moment of you know safetyness and if you can if if anybody can follow and keep their innocence like you know protected then that's that's how you're going to keep that like passion alive and try to have that balance with ego soul and the imposter syndrome like it's never going to go away but at least you'll learn how to navigate it 
I call it like the annoying roommates that's just there living for free. It is. They <laughs> like are just, annoying. They're never going to go away, but you, you got to learn how to live with that and cope with you gotta that. You got to learn how to like, like shove them off your shoulder, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And just give it an expiration date and just kind of like move forward. But um, mm -hmm. no, you've always been a risk taker and you've always been so outgoing and just using your voice. Like you, you can call it you know, being loud or extra for other reasons, but I'm, I'm calling it your true authenticity. Like that's you. That's just, that's just Debbie Bellino. Like you're just loud party starter wherever you go. <laughs> and no wonder it makes sense when you eventually came to Mac and you're assisting one of the most important people of Mac oh, Cosmetics. I love her. And I mean, I, don't let me get started with her because then mm. we love her too as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, uh, and then full circle moment at your first CBS job and to be married there and like celebrate your union with your husband, like on set, like in the back lot, like that's just incredible. And I was there to witness it. I'm so yes, my happy auntie that was I there. was there. Oh, you weren't just there. Yeah. You did my husband's hair. I sure did. I was part he was of the, the man. He was the man. The room he, party. <laughs> I hope you understand though, that George won't let just anyone touch his hair. I, I haven't know. touched his hair. I've been married hair. to him for how he's got good hair, but I've been married mm -hmm. to him for years. I've known him for, oh my gosh, two decades, three decades. Am I having three decades? Two decades. I've known him. I've grown up with him, right? So yeah. I still haven't touched his hair. He won't let me. Only Andrew can. Not even during COVID? Do you know how no. many especially during, during COVID? <laughs> oh gosh, especially during so COVID. So where does he no. get his hair done now? Well, there's no Andrew, so there's no haircuts. His hair is like longer than mine. It's crazy. He's just letting it grow. Just yeah. Let it grow. I'm He's in like that phase right Jesus. now, too. You yeah. are too? Yeah, I'm just oh kind of like letting it grow. Yeah. Oh, I don't see it. Like, it's always like perfectly just oh, styled. Thank you. And, oh, my goodness. So thank handsome. You. Thank you for sharing that. That was so cool. Like, I loved hearing the evolution of Debbie Bellino from baby Canada to where you're at now <laughs> and then back full circle in Canada. Um, and so, and then you, the podcast and then the sass and smalls and the fashion, like where, how did that go about? Like, where did that even come from? Uh, okay. Well, that's a really good question because it does sound really random, but I think the whole point of me telling you all this stuff is that I just always felt the need to be in the arts somehow. Like I would try to push it away because, you know, growing up, you know, first gen North American, like it's not really my parents, you know, no shade on yeah. them, but, no. but, um, most, most people in kind of that boomer generation are like doctor, lawyer, teacher, yeah. you know, and, and those are mm -hmm. wonderful professions, but I just didn't find that to be my calling. And I tried, I actually mm -hmm. did try you and did. I was just always pulled back to artistry somehow. And so it, it did start off with singing later. I would be singing. Um, okay. So I was cantering and then I started getting hired. I was like your proverbial wedding singer so i got hired for weddings and then i would yes. get hired for funerals and i'm looking up i'm singing a song and there was like what's his name oh gosh the the pacinos al pacino's family oh, not al pacino who am i thinking about the fr the, the coppola sorry the coppola yeah, you're good pacino. i knew it was the, gonna the, get the, to you the, the so the, the coppolas the family was there and i sang for their the, their one of the father's funerals wow. and i'm looking around and so and like every so often i started singing for like celebrities what seemed to be more funerals but some weddings and i'm sitting there going well who am i to be asked to do this but the, my outlet the outlet was the church right and so they saw me i'd sing every week and so the more i got out there the more i'd be seen and so one opportunity led to the other and then next thing you know i was also on cbs I had back then we had MySpace. Remember MySpace? I do remember MySpace. Yeah. Okay. So I had a little tiny baby website on there, nothing serious. And someone had seen it. And then one thing led to the other and ended up on Young the Restless. And so I was asked to sing this little kind of snippet and um, wow. with, with, uh, with a scene with Nia Peoples. And Nia Peoples was someone I really, really admired as a kid. And I loved her. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. And then, um, and Young the Restless was one of my favorite. Oh, iconic. It was yes. my one of my favorite daytime shows mm -hmm. ever. But then I was a little disappointed. Still on air. 
It's still on air. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. When I saw the set and how it looks, it, it was like this teeny tiny little hospital. Genoa City is like this small. And your fantasy and your, was my ruined. fantasy just squash. It was just squash. <laughs> <laughs> but but no shade because I, I do love I do love it still. I do love Young and the Restless. I just haven't watched lately because, you know, life. But um, yeah. It was really an honor to be asked. I really wish my grandma was alive because she was a huge fan and I would have loved for her to see me on there. And I didn't mean to be, I, I didn't even audition. I was just kind of asked to go in for the role. I thought I was actually auditioning, but they just asked me to sing. So I sang Incredible. and then um, it was in one take. They wouldn't let me do another take. And I was just like, oh man, that was a really bad take. But then they took it and so we, one th so then I was asked to go to another another season and another season and then I got to know the musicians behind you know, the writer behind the the songs the behind the the writer behind the music kind of yeah. like sector and I did other projects for them which led to like Hallmark shows and then other stuff and then even while I was at CBS um, I did promotions at CBS as well and there was a few times where somebody would show up to do a billboard a voiceover mm. you know the ones that are like next week on csi like yeah. that person let's say they didn't show up or something happened so then i had to fill in or i had to do a little mock one and they're like you kind of have a good voice you should really look into that i was like no come on so i did yeah. it and I, it's funny andrew i've always hated my voice i always found my voice to be very strident and loud and kind of no, easily it's so soothing it's good especially when you speak it and you you do that like lower tone yeah. oh the lower tone yeah i had to learn to do that because I'm, I'm always and then i had to do baby voices and so i ended up being asked to do voiceover for stuff and the opportunities were just endless and i ended up bringing singing back into it because they're like we want to do a little thing you know, there would be like this explosion scene on NCIS mm. and they needed this like ethereal kind of crazy um, haunting voice. I'm, yeah. Do I look haunting? Come on, please. Right. <laughs> but he challenged, he would challenge me, the producer, Mike, he would challenge me and he's like, let's just do this. You can do it. And I'm like, oh God. And then, so he just told me what, what to do. And then I yeah. followed and it turned out to be okay, right? It turned out to be pretty fun. And then, so I got hired for more things. And so it became my job. I was like, what? Amazing. That was my job. Yeah. The and fact then, that you took like MySpace to put your stuff out there, use that to share your work, your portfolio, and they were able to pick and choose that. And you take that risk and it kept leading to bigger things, bigger things and bigger things, but you got to like do the work. It wasn't just like overnight. Work. Yeah. Well, you have to be willing you have to say yes. And I, I, you know, I think it all started with kind of looking, going into the church and saying, hey, maybe I should join a choir because I never discovered my voice mm -hmm. until I went into a choir. And then, like I said, I, I and then through there, I actually met some people who worked in studio. And in fact, one, one amazing man who he happened to be, do you remember Michael Damien? Do you remember him? That, that name sounds familiar. He, he was on Young and the Restless and he, okay was someone I had, remember Teen Beat or Tiger Beat? Do you remember yes, that magazine? the magazine, yeah, yeah. Okay, the so all over voice, my bedroom, yeah. let's go back to when like 10 year old Deb or 12 year old Deb, I used to have like these magazine photos all over my, my, my of <laughs> Michael Damien, right? And I just loved him. And like, I don't know what it was. I just, I loved that he was like such a bad boy. He, you're kind of reminiscent of him. He's like biker jacket, oh. hair slicked back, oh. you know? Yeah, check him out, he's cool. Anyway, so, okay. so he, now he's doing Hallmark movies too. And he's, he's amazing, him and his wife. And he, anyway, he, his, his brother, was one of my drummers for catering the wedding. Yeah. Yeah, from oh. the weddings and from no all of it weddings funerals okay. whatever and he brought me into a studio and that's where i started singing in the studio and i became a studio wow. rat and i would sing there probably like three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning i just did it every weekend i'd be singing yeah. and then michael damien comes in he tells me that's his brother and i'm like come on and we became wow. friends and then he asked me to sing on his album and so it just full circle we'd go to his house i'm like i cannot believe you were on my walls and now I'm here having dinner with you, your beautiful wife in this house. Did you tell him that? I did. I always tell. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he was at my wedding. Okay. This is the funny part. He was at my wedding with you, you beautiful people. Yeah, yeah. And I had, I had, I was very lucky. Like everyone who walked through the red carpet on the, like on that, uh, in that studio or that, where was I? We were Wasn't in the, the lot. friends lot. Sli it's the, it's friends the no, it's adjacent? Seinfeld lot. No, it's the, it's oh, the right. Seinfeld, the Seinfeld lot. 
and yeah. the CSI lot. So CSI also filmed right before we started putting the, the tables and the chairs down. CSI yeah. was just wrapping up. It's so funny. Um, the reason why we did that, and again, it kind of goes back to my need to be creative, is like, I can't just have a pretty wedding in a pretty no. venue with pretty Anything flowers. Basic. No. There was nothing basic. I just, well, I ended up getting, instead of like this gorgeous array of flowers and this arch and all those things that people do, I had, you know, a, I had a brown cake. Do you remember that? A brown I cake do. with a green I ribbon. Do. I had like, a, I think it was like a lily, it was a calla lily that was, that was kind of like purpley brown. I just needed to like integrate these specific colors. George didn't care. Yeah. He was like, just, he just attended, right? He's like, whatever. Back to your and artistry. So, mm -hmm. I had to just always be creative like that. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't just let it go. And then we ended up doing everything ourselves. Cause again, you know, we were just living essentially check to check it, you know, at first, because we just didn't have enough funds to like, like support living there. You know how it is. Yeah. So yeah. Expensive Especially there. a wedding to amount of people. Yeah yeah but you guys so, did it and honestly to this day it. it's one of the most memorable weddings i've ever been to in my Aww. life like so much fun such a good time with such beautiful people i love that i wanted to ask since you were on that topic if you could share any tips or advice for aspiring entrepreneurs looking to incorporate more creativity and spirituality into their work okay well this is actually this is this is right let my jam because i think my biggest thing is struggle and I threw out, I'm not telling you as much of the struggle, but following that, you, you said at my intro, I had a lot of losses. I moved here and I kind of just stopped being creative. So the one thing that I could say is that kind of almost embracing the struggles in life and, you know, and, and then owning the struggles and then use it to become, um, to, to become the artist you're meant to be. So whether it catapults something else or it, you know, motivates you to continue with a craft that you kind of put down, which is kind of what yeah. I did. I put, I put down my podcast. And the thing is, I've learned to use my struggles to storytell. So now I'm using my voice, but not as a singer. My kid didn't even know I sang until about last week. He didn't know Shut I up. ever sang. No, he had no idea I sang. And, I had a, and he loves you. He does love me, I, I have yeah. to say. And I always wonder, I'm like, do you You're love me? Goddess. But we talk about what, because I was really flattered when you said, you know, he reminds me a lot of how I was with my mom. And that mm -hmm. made me cry, Andrew, because. Yeah. Girl, he's stuck on you. He's like on that stuck hit. On he don't want to go. So That's like how I was. And everything so you, you're doing, he wants to do. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. He does my makeup yeah. all the time. And he always tells me, yeah. you need to blend more. Like he's oh, so. He's... Not, the, not the tutorial. The toddler tutorial. <laughs> he gives you the toddler tutorial. Oh, no, no. He takes the brush and he just does it. But yeah. I always have, like, again, like as a mom, the like, imposter syndrome comes in. I'm like, I'm a terrible mom. Every day I always say this. I'm a terrible mom. And I, I didn't say I do have, a, I have a daughter, 12 year old, and I have a little five year old son. And they, it motivated me to come here when I, when she was born. And so I brought her here about a decade ago and she was just yeah. a little itty baby. And through the struggles, um, I was able to share my story and that's kind of how I had other opportunities open for me. And yeah. so I think the one thing I'd love to tell your listeners is embrace the struggles and use it to inspire you to, to, to write or to storytell. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think also like, just like you said, like just shove away the imposter syndrome and anyone who just kind of doubts or makes you second guess, like I'm such a people pleaser. And I've always, never i've I've never really fully embraced who i am um until recently i think until becoming a mom i never really embraced yeah. i am extra and i am artistic but i kind of hit it because you should you shouldn't be like it's a hobby right like artistry is a hobby is what people would say and i'm like mm, it's, it's a lifestyle me, though. It's, a it's lifestyle. a lifestyle it's a choice mm -hmm. right yeah a lot of things that you said that i want to touch on is well through traumas, which we, we've all experienced some form of trauma, you can transform. Through yeah. trauma, you can triumph. Through yeah. trauma and accepting it and, and purging it and releasing it, um, you can evolve into the person that you're supposed to be. Um, and, and that's still part of the ongoing journey. Like Even the person that you feel you're supposed to become will naturally evolve as well. <laughs> so that's it's yeah. learning how to like pivot and learning how to adapt. Creative people are so good at that. We're in any environment that you go into. Um, you just gotta like believe in yourself, you know? And if you have moments of loss, if you have moments of doubts, that's fine. That's part of the human experience. 
acknowledge it, give it a, an expiration date, but then move forward. Don't let it be that overwhelming thought that is constant because then that is exactly what you're going to become. But mm -hmm. if you're constantly thinking of the opposite, if you're thinking of more positive and the good outcomes, and that is what you're going to become versus this other negative thought, you know, or imposter syndrome. You know, that's exactly what happened in my situation. I, I started having multiple losses, right? And so I became the, the mom that just kept losing babies. I just became that person. And I, I didn't want to be that person anymore. I didn't want to be the only person. I didn't want to have my platform be just about that. But what I realized is the healing from it was really what my true journey was. The fact that I could get back up, we built our family in a very non-conventional way. And we're so grateful because this amazing woman who's a really dear friend of mine, she, I call her my cirrhosis, she asked if we could, you know, if she, she asked if she could be her, our egg donor. So we ended up finding ways around it. And then, so our story was shared and shared and shared. And then I realized, I kind of stopped sharing it because I was like, I don't want to just talk about my trauma and I don't want to talk about just this. And I realized yeah, I what it is, is just trying to get my groove back as a mom. Cause I kind of lost it. And like, I told you my colorful history. Yes. But it kind of went down to a gray when I became a mom, because I thought that to be a good mom was to put your hair in a, in a bun, a messy bun, look like a hot mess and live with cold coffee and a robe and follow mm -hmm. our kids around and like wipe their mouths every, every two seconds. Like I thought that's the definition of a good mom. And I realized I've been a better mom lately because I made the choice to Thank love you. myself too. Thank you. And they see it now, you know, they're, yeah. they're like, mom looks happy. And in fact, when I have a day where I'm like acting up my daughter, she's so insightful. She says, Mom, I think you need to go go to your computer and podcast again or something. Mom, I need you. I need you to go call your friends on Marco Polo because my yeah, like she knows that I need to be fed with like yeah. a little bit of that extra energy. And I don't yes. get it usually when I choose to just focus on them. Mm -hmm. They don't need that. Right. right. They want to see me no. happy. Absolutely. And in order for you to be the best mom that you can be is for you to love your yourself first and for you to be yeah. selfish first and take it's like when you're on the plane what do they say before helping others taking that oxygen on your own exactly mm -hmm. so you gotta take care of that you know um i love that do you have any practices or routines that you have placed to nurture your creativity and spirituality while running your businesses and i'm gonna include being a mom as a business because that is a business in itself it but, is a business, oh please. there's a thumbs up <laughs> thumbs up who's that from <laughs> it's the ios update on Oh, nice. Yeah, like if you do oh, this, like it does something sometimes. Oh, cool. Or this. That. AI scares me. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of good. Oh, come on. Yeah. I wanted that. Oh, come on. That is so cool. Come on. <laughs> well, if you're on YouTube, you can see it. But Oh, my God. I need to try this out. This is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, well, gosh, th this goes, but getting my energy back to you with my, with my kids too, is to just get outside. I think the outside thing is the, the secret to life. Thank you. Thank you. I've, I've recently just kind Mother of Mother nature is real. She is there for us, for yes, all mamas. Mm -hmm. Totally. That's why it's called mm -hmm. mama nature. Mm -hmm. I have, um, I think a good walk on the beach is kind of my jam these mm. days. Taking off my shoes, which I never do. I do Getting that grounded. now. grounded. Yeah, grounded. And I've just started to to kind of do more grounding practice. And I, yeah. I, I love feet on the ground. And like just being, you know, without sounding too woo woo, I, mean, I just really love no, the, the idea of nature connecting yeah. to a body part, right. And usually, mm -hmm. so I start my day off, this is a very recent practice, but I've noticed such a, a a shift. If you interviewed me Beautiful. three weeks ago, Andrew, different Deb, seriously. <laughs> well, that was also last year, right? That was last year. It's a long last time ago. Deb, yeah, We're in 2024, yeah, year, girl. You're good. This, this is, is 2024, right Deb. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was, I'd be like, I just started just this practice again. I used to do good. it. I've been resurrecting. I'm resurrecting these practices. But one of the things that I would absolutely tell your listeners is start the morning off you know, put the coffee or tea or whatever aside for now, grab yourself a water, just go out in your patio or open your mm -hmm. door and let the sun just like beat on your face. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. sunglasses, just let it beat on your face. Like mm -hmm. not, not everyone has the luxury, especially moms. 
not everyone has the luxury to go for a walk first thing in the morning. You got kids, right? So I'll feed the kids. I'll just do something simple. I kind of simplified this mommying thing. I used to have epic breakfast. Now I'm like, they're so happy with like, yeah. you know, just you're like, little... you're, you're breathing, right? You're alive. You're good. You're breathing. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Let's and, go. And then, exactly. And then I'll go in the patio. Okay, get, get this. So I go in the patio mm -hmm. and just like how you said about my son, he's kind of like clinging to me. So I go to the patio, I get the sun beating my face. I grab, um, I'm starting to do a journal. You inspired me to get yes. into journaling. Yes. Journaling is a thing, babe. I used to Good not job. do it. I did and I did and I did. I didn't. Now I, I just prompt it. Like I'll, I'll get prompts as opposed to, I can't just kind of come up. Do with it for 30 like days at least. And let's see. Yeah. Where you're at at least do you go with prompting though or do you like do you just write whatever um well i have the first thing that i do is my reflect 30-day reset check off list which it's a lot of the things that you've already said so i'll i'll check off 10 lists of practicing meditation gratitude mother nature acts kind acts cold showers no caffeine eat greens um visualize journal and then in the journaling i'll write things that i'm grateful for at least three things that i'm grateful for Gratitude, that i visually yeah. see mm -hmm. yeah and then within that i'll also counteract with three things that i visualize that i'm trying to manifest for the future um and i'll break it down you know for like five-year goal to a one-year goal and then i'll break that down per quarter as well i'm a capricorn i'm like a weirdo that. i'm all like you know nerd and I, 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 I say I'm a ongoing student of the University of Mother Nature. And so I'm always yeah. going to practice mindfulness in any capacity. Um, but yeah, no, I love that you're practicing that daily now. And it's making yeah. a difference and you're noticing Huge. it. And so are the kids. Huge. So oh yeah, they that. followed continue me. They, they started coming into the patio too with me. Yes. And they, they'll turn off the TV and I'm like do they just turn off the TV without me asking? Thank and you. then they sat in the seat and one got her little like sketchbook. The other one, he got his little Rubik's cube. He's trying to figure out the Rubik's cube. And we just sat yeah. in the sun. We talked about that. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, exactly. And he just, he just, yeah, he's talked to you before. He loves Uncle Drew. Who doesn't yeah. love Uncle Drew, please? Aww. But isn't that crazy? Like now, like all the modeling that's happening, I have yeah, to take babe. care of myself first so that these little kiddos can follow suit, right? Instead of me telling them. Leading by I hate example. Being yeah. yeah. Being being by example, egg. yeah, yeah, you're not. And when you have those moments, it's okay. You're human. It's it's going to be part of the process, and just give it that time to reflect and remove yourself from that situation, so you can come back with a new pair pair of eyes. You know what I mean? Hundred um, percent. Love that. Okay, so cool. So we have a new segment for season two, you guys. The library is open <laughs> because reading is what. Fundamental. There you have it, darling. This is a segment for our guests to share their favorite book. It is called The Library is Open. So, Debbie Bellino, can you share with us uh, a book that you're currently reading or your favorite book in the past and the top three reasons why? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so you are giving a person with ADHD the beauty <laughs> of a choice. I cannot make choices, Andrew. Okay. I can guide you through that. Okay, okay. What's the name you of the book? Okay, well, I, I have a, a, a favorite book, and then Perfect. I have a book I'm reading right now, but love they it. have the same reasons why I love them. Can I just do that? Go for it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so my favorite book of all time that I keep going back to as reference for life is called Creative Calling from Chase Jarvis. And, um, well, I'll tell you the reasons after I tell you the book I'm currently reading, which is our wonderful friend, the boss that we were talking about, the one we work for at, at Mac, who I know is... Like, yes. I know you love her too. Iris Navarrete is a new author for um, From Her to Eternity. And she has it as a memoir. And so I'm reading through the memoir and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting to know this woman I already knew before. And much like your book, Andrew, I love your book too. Because mm, you. your book, it really gave me a, a glimpse of, of who you are, who the author is, that to me is the most important to know that there's a humanity behind that author. And so the same with Creative Calling. 
what I love about these memoirs and these kind of books about creativity and finding yourself in the arts, it motivates me. It's a personal, there's a personal attachment to it. But what I love the yeah. most is there's such a value placed on creativity. So that's like reason. So first reason Good. is you get to know the author, you get to know how human they are, they're relatable to you and you see their love for arts. And second one is that they look at creativity um, like it's a necessity. Yeah. All your guys' books, all you wonderful yeah. books that really they, they really speak to me are the ones where artistry is a fundamental part of their life. Period. And I love hearing that. And I don't hear that often, right? So mm -hmm. that. It's a chosen and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Chosen lifestyle. But I think it's almost just like, it's so necessary. Like I'm finding my kids, like they, yeah. they do as much art as they do math. Yeah. They do as yes. much art, probably more, you know, and it's not just dr drawing art, like illustrative, it's like speaking it's all mediums. Yeah, just everything, all this stuff like, um, and then the third reason, what else did I love about that, that book and all the, all your, as you're thinking books. that I'm going to just rename the titles we have from her to eternity author, Iris Navarrete, as well as creative calling by Chase Jarvis. Yes. Best books because um for me i needed to get some sort of self-development without it being like and this is the third reason is like it's kind of a resource right because mm. like an ongoing resource that it can keep coming back to and creative calling doesn't just say you know you know do this do th or 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 you should feel this or you should be this to be a better person they literally give you you know a guidance step by step like this is this you know pick up that pencil you know get out of mm -hmm. your you know kind of like how we're talking right now yeah. it's just strategies and i kind of need that i need someone to tell me what to do right yeah. and like i can't always just kind of come up with it myself it's guidance yeah guidance so those are my three reasons good i, I love that good job Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to put that Thanks, in the man. description for sure. Um, all right. Very cool. So we're moving on. Um, I want to have a lot more time with you. Uh, this is an hour show. So we have Sorry, another part of my, much. no, I love you so much. I, I should extend it for like two hours. <laughs> so we're going to come up. Don't be sorry, baby. You're good. Wrapping uh, up my part is rapid cues. I'm going to ask you three questions wherever you are. Uh, oh intuitively answer them. Don't think about it too hard. So okay. question number one, Debbie Bellino. Who is your hero and why? Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. 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 Um, okay. I'm going to keep it personal. Can I keep it personal? Okay. Um, it, it's like a two, one, one, um, my mom and my daughter. And the reason why is because oh, I'm not going to cry. Don't make me cry. Andrew. Don't make me cry. I've got a daughter who made me a mom in the first place. And then I got my mom who modeled motherhood for me. And both of them are the are exact opposite of me. So my mom is Estrella and my daughter is Ella. So that's really kind of something. Um, what I love about these two women specifically, or girls, my daughter's still 12, but what I love about them is that they are unapologetically themselves. They are the exact opposite of me. They own their silence. They live in silence in the sense of they're, they're comfortable with silence. And that's something that I have to be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable being exactly who they are. And they're very different from your typical, like I did talk about neurodivergence, right? In my, in my intro and yeah. my, both of them are incredibly themselves. They're just not like everyone else and they own it. And I need, to learn from that. So I'm really learning from That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm really learning from them just embracing who they are as as quiet observers, wise observers. And yeah. I just need to shut up sometimes and just like, like, listen, and that's what yeah. they are. They're amazing listeners. But hmm. yeah, the celebration of the all generations beautifully. Yeah, said. thank totally. you. Thanks. Wrapping up my part is rapid cues. Question number two, W. Bolino, uh, what is your favorite music album of all time? Oh, gosh. <laughs> i know oh i'm talking you know, like track one to 12 or oh whatever gosh. it is let it play okay you Girl. know i grew up with like the divas right like you've got i had whitney i have anita baker i got you know this is gonna be hard know, okay this is that one album one okay one yeah. one okay deserted island one disc man one cd oh disc man okay i know disc man <laughs> okay i know exactly who um have you ever heard of eva cassidy Oh, she's no. killer. Oh my no, gosh. Gonna, you need, you need to just down. stop what okay. you're doing. She does covers of like Sting did Field of Gold. 
Fields of Gold. And she did a rendition of that and um, Over the Rainbow. And uh, she unfortunately, she passed away at a young age and her... Um, she became famous after she had passed away. So she did these cover tunes and from track to track, literally from like track one to the last track, you are weeping. She Mm. does this rendition that is so different. So just, and I love being different. And I love, it sounds familiar. You got to try You'll hear her. You'll go, Oh dang. And then you're just going to recognize it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I love learning about new music. Thank you. I knew you were going to pick somebody cool too. Ah, All right, my babe. Wrapping up my four artists, Rapid Cues, final question. What is your favorite quote? Oh, gosh. Um, quote, quote, quote. Martin Luther. Martin Luther. Um, what was it? Uh, if you can't, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Whatever you do, just move forward. Wow, like Dude, that's a mic drop moment right there. Mic drop because yes. when I when I heard that I've been living that my life deep. that way that I'm always crawling, I'm always just like <laughs> making it, I can't do this. Yeah. But you, but but the one thing I do I do actually do is move forward. I just do it really slow or in like hot mess status, but move forward. I love that. Move and forward. Yeah, Period. just been kind of living that quote, not knowing it, but yeah. Well said. Bravo, my friend. Dude. Oh, my goodness. How do you feel? That was so fun. <laughs> You're just a natural. Hold up. Oh Where gosh. can we follow you? Where can we support you? Do you have any upcoming projects? Anything that you want to share with us? Tell oh us my. where we can follow all the things. Well, like I said, I kind of put things on on the back burner, um, caregiving for my parents and my and then like homeschooling and like that's just not my jam but i'm learning to live with it now like learning how I see to see a comeback be. soon though i do but the comeback is happening in mm-hmm. the midst of it and i'm like mm-hmm. oh yeah you just have to make room for it so i am currently on this journey of getting my sass back so on my um platform which is sass and smalls which also covers sass and small talk podcast but i am gonna get the pot i'm gonna like dust off my microphone you are my first interview since like yes. so I, I put it down i haven't touched it for months because i've been focused on life and now yeah. i'm like ready to just like dust it off get back on track so your daughter I'm said everyone. it yeah she did she I did that girl she's like yeah you're you seem miserable mom go back on your microphone go I back to your computer too. and that's i I, I think that's that's what it's going to be. It's just like following me on. I'm just kind of like growing on TikTok. And I'm, I'm like this small on TikTok, but I want to grow and and share my story and help other mamas get their sass back because I already feel that energy shift from literally yeah. weeks ago. And so that's kind of the new thing that I'm doing on my website. So bravo, baby! And I'm so going, happy. So is yeah. it Sass and Smalls on Instagram and then the podcast? Yeah. Yeah. sassasmalls.com yeah com is my website sass and smalls and all my pat- platforms is sass and smalls i even have Beautiful. sass and small talk but that you know and then also i'm just growing on tiktok so like i don't know if you want to sass and smalls as well there. on there yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah all yeah. the things i all love things. it thank you so much thank you Andrew. you're amazing this you're was beautiful. amazing <laughs> <You're> beautiful. <laughs> you guys this is the Mindful Artist Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things mindfulness, creativity. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Mindful Artist Podcast. And if you are a uh, creative entrepreneur that wants to be on our show and is balancing the life, all the things, email me at mindfulartistpodcast at gmail.com. That song you're about to hear, Mi Corazón, you could download wherever you stream your favorite music, written by myself, Andrew Velasquez, and produced by Aaron McLendon. Um, don't forget to share this episode with somebody that you love. And give us those stars in the reviews, you guys. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you so much, everybody. Make an impact in somebody's life. Until next time, much love and light. Bye. Bye.